ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وشرورنا لا اله الا الله وحده ربي لا شريك له وشرورنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه وشهد انه قد بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الظلم ومحط الظلم وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى اتاه اليقين اللهم ازيه عنا وعن الاسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن امته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته انك ولي ذلك والقادر عليه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الاولين وصل عليه في الاخرين وصل عليه في المرئ على الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذني الله وإياكم من النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألهى وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد بفكر brothers and sisters تلي سقط بها some reflections on the need for the unity and the harmony of the Ummah and this is not just because of MLK Day passing on Monday but I was not sure who would be the audience today and this is not something that Alhamdulillah is a negative thing but I was in a picture in a different audience what I mean by that is that we all know the harms of racism in this country and the community be it Muslim or not Muslim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came with a comprehensive religion that is here to lead humanity to all success and to also warn them and shun them away from all failure. So one is, as humans, people may feel a certain type of um, fraternity, sorority as being the human race. However, we see the harms of that, that when some people don't have guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not know who the Creator is, and why he placed them here and what is it that he exactly expects of us then they fall victim to the wounds of shaitan and their nafs and their ego and we see these atrocities and evils so first of all Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya wa inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'abudun Allah says, and verily this ummah of yours is one ummah. And therefore you should worship your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Mu'minun, Wa inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahida, wa ana rabbukum fattakur. Allah he says, indeed this is your um, and indeed this one ummah of yours, but indeed this ummah of yours is one ummah, and I am your Lord, so have. Taqwa of me, consciousness of me, fulfill my commandments and stay away from my prohibitions. And Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ, he gave us the best of examples where not only he encouraged the unity and the love of the Muslim Ummah and the Sahaba amongst himself, but he also did not tolerate any dissension and any separate. And that's why the true identity of a believer is Islam before anything else. That before we have an identity to our culture or our nationality or our language or whatnot, our first identity is Muslims. And that's why when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, after the Ghaz, one of the Ghazawat, one of the excursions, that you know the hypocrites <coughs> tried to stir up disunity amongst them. You know, divide and conquer is not a new tactic. It's been here from the inception of Shaitan's message. So anyway. Uh, excuse me, one of the Jews of Medina tried to descend, uh, separate the Muslims. So when the, when the Aus and Al-Khazraj, the two tribes of Medina, 
uh, before Islam reached them, and Yathrib, they used to fight for generations. But Allah united them through Islam. Allah says in Surah to Ali Imran, you are on the banks of the fire, but Allah SWT saved you from them. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And you came by his blessing and his virtue to be uh, brothers. To be brothers. So anyway, that Jew, he tried to say the old poetry in Arabic that used to separate the Osir and Khazraj to dissent them. So one of them said, Ya lil Ansar. Well, you know, all Ansar come together. One of them said, Ya lil Muhajirin. And another one said, Muhajirin come together. To basically go by these bounds. We're from Mecca, you're from Medina. We have history, you have history, this is our, you know, this is our, you know, uh, basically identity. But the Prophet Sallallahu what did he tell them? He said, Are you calling to the ways of pre-Islamic ignorance and I'm in your midst? So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, He will not tolerate disunity in His Ummah, uh, in the Ummah of Muhammad or amongst the Muslimin. Allah does not tolerate that. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an He mentions to us certain commandments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in Surah Al-Hujurat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ تَقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحِمُونَ Allah He says indeed the believers are not but brothers In Arabic the most you know, emphasis you can give and the most emphatic statement is that a nafi ma'al ithbat you negate something and then you affirm something else so you leave out all else whatever else you want to call it so as some scholars say that it is mahluf but it is the word for emphasizing is the believers are not but brothers so rectify your brother it's not something like once a year we may file taxes or every three months you have to change your oil in your car. So some things have a periodic maintenance. The maintenance of a brotherhood and a sisterhood in Islam is all day, every day. Any time it's not there, we have to rectify. But also the approval rectify your brotherhood. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ And Allah so gives a command and beware, conscious of Allah. Fulfill his commandments, stay away from his prohibitions so that you may be shown mercy. So, inshallah, we'll continue with the next khutbah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an wa al-Sunnah. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-Dhikri wa al-Hikmah. Wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa nisa'i al-Muslim. Wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa nisa'i al-Muslim. الحمد لله على امتنانه وأشكره على فضله وآلائه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له سقرارا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد وسألها أنا أرسبكت برادز وسستس I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He never mentions anything without purpose and wisdom and sometimes you don't get the message when it's told you know mashallah nice and sweet and buttered up and you know, covered with you know cherry on top sometimes you have to be strong you have to make, uh, convey the message so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mentions in Surah Al-Hujurat Surah Al-Hujurat is the 49th Surah in the Quran and it is a Surah revealed in Medina and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this in the ninth year after the Ijra' Amr Wufud. This is when the, the Muslim Ummah, the Sahaba, were the most diverse they were in the history of the Prophet. So now with all these different types of backgrounds, tribes, and, and you know, people, places of origin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah. And this is a surah, surah to adab. This is a surah of mannerisms and etiquette. And it first starts off with etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi But the majority of the verses, they have to do with etiquette between the general masses. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says, Ya ayu al-ladhina amin, ashtanibu kathiyyam min al-dhan, inna ba'adu al-dhan min al-dhan. Oh, you who believe, 
This is what I'm reading from is the tafsir of uh, the Sheikh uh, Ali al-Sabuni, may Allah have mercy on him. Oh, excuse me, Muhammad, Rahimahullah, Ali al-Sabuni, in Safat al-Tafasir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, Ya ayuhu al-ladheena amanu, uh, O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, O you who believe, Ay ma'asal al-mu'mineen, O assembly of believers. Ya man ittasaf, ya man ittasaftum, ya man ittasaftum al-maskhura min bukhayran indallahi min as-saf. Allah says, La yaskhara qawmu min qawm. Let not one group of you scoff or mock or ridicule the other. So he says in his tafsir, this address is for those who attribute themselves with faith, وَصَدَّقْتُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And you believe in Allah's book and His Messenger, لَا يَحْزَأْ جَمَاعَتُمْ بِجَمَاعًا Let not one group make fun of the other group. And this goes by many strengths. Throughout the history of humanity, there has been clashes between other people. Of course, we know the white supremacist system in this country, that in reality, we've seen it with our own eyes, the darker your skin, in their eyes, you may have less value. But this is not just a message that is trying to compel, sorry, not compel, combat anti-black racism. That there's another type of racism in the Ummah that is called a reverse racism. So coming into America, it's not that they have superiority, but Allah Azza wa has tested them with what power they have and white supremacy. So now coming into America as a migrant or someone with darker skin, you are seen as lesser or inferior. But instead of bounding together as brothers, as Muslims first, unfortunately we have these schisms within us in our community. I'll come back to that later, Shaykh. So Allah, He says that, excuse me, in the Tafsir of As-Sabun, He says, Now that one group of you mock the other, nor should anyone belittle or tease or mock another. Allah, He said, let not one group mark the other. Perhaps that that group who is being marked will be better than the one that is doing the mark. He refers to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Some people you may see in this world, the Prophet said, there's many of them, their, their body is dusty and their hair is disheveled. They only have two tattered pieces of clothing on. If they make dua to Allah, whatever they ask Allah, Allah will fulfill their dua. So we do not know who has value in the sight of Allah. Why? Because in Allah, لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأجسامكم وفي رواية وأموالكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وعمالكم Allah doesn't look at your body's appearance or the wealth that you have or your, or your outward state if He wants to choose and select you. But Allah, He looks in your heart and your deeds. And to have racism in one's heart, this is a... It, this is a disease of the heart that prevents one from hearing this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah, He says, now in the Quran, whenever Allah addresses a male audience with a, with a, you know, a verb that is addressing the male gender, it includes the feminine. But because this is very common in places in the Quran when it is important to address both men and women, Allah will repeat after commanding the men and command to a woman. Allah, He says, just as the men should not mock one another, a group of women should not mock another group of women. Perhaps the women being mocked has more, uh, has more, is, has more value and significance in the sight of Allah than the one that is doing the mock. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said, "وَلَا تَلْمِزُ أَنْفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَاغَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ وَلَا يَعْرُضُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا." He says, one of you should not mention the faults and the, the bad characteristic traits of the other. You should not call another with a bad name. Whether that's just in jest and you're mentioning that, the integrity of a believer is great in the sight of Allah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he came back to Mecca after eight years of being separated after his hijrah, Abdullah ibn Umar mentions he made the tawaf and he, the Prophet is speaking to the Kaaba, Ya Kaaba, that Ma a'adhamuki wa ma a'adhamu hurmatuki Allah. How great is your sanctity and your value in the sight of Allah. Wa ma a'atibu rihaki, how pleasant is your fragrance. Walakinna Allah ha ja'ala hurmati al-mu'min a'adhamu hurmatuki. 
then on Ramadan we are afdal kunaha. But Allah has made the the integrity and the reputation and honor of a believer greater than the honor of the Kaaba. To Allah the Muslim who bows down five times a day and upholds his commandments and stays away from prohibition, he has more value than the Kaaba. None of us will tolerate someone looking at the Kaaba and calling it bad names. But today if a Muslim, male or female, dark or light, whatever their background is, when they're insulted, do we feel that the honor of a believer has more honor than the Kaaba? Or we just say, yeah, been there, done that. It's, it's nothing new. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, do not call each other bad names. And then He says, بِئْسَ لِسْمُ الْحُسُوكُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ بِئْسَ أَنْ يُسَمَّ الْإِنسَانُ فَاسِقًا بَعْدَ أَنْ صَارَ مُؤْمِنًا That it is that it is how evil it is that a believer, uh, or excuse me, a human being, be called a fasik, and, and uh, one who outwardly uh, transgresses the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after he has become a believer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever does not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, an unrestricted statement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that whoever does not repent then they are from the wrongdoers so this also requires repentance not just the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone violates them they need to be uh, they need to repent from them. but at the same time when the rights of another human or creation especially a Muslim are trampled upon then they also need to repent from them. so now respected brothers and sisters the time is short but we know the system uh, of white supremacy in this country. But we're not expecting from them to teach us how to act. We have a, a book that is complete. Allah SWT mentioned, We left nothing omitted from the book, referring to the Quran. Allah He says, We have sent down to you a book that, that uh, clarifies and explains everything. So this is our guidance. If we live by it, we hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will forgive us and be merciful to us and guide us, but we will be an example for others. Because in respect to the brothers, one thing to say, and sisters, what is the true uh, cure of racism? What is the true cure of racism? That we have to know what is our origin and what is going to be our end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever He tries to humble the human being in the Quran, He reminds him of His Origin. What is our origin? Allah he says, Alam nakhlukukum limna in mahin. Do we not create you from that embarrassing, despicable food that we all know a man emits into a woman? That is our origin. No one will go on, I hope it's not there. If somebody went on the internet and started debating that the semen of my father is better than the semen of your father, because this person is crazy. And what is the end we're going back to? Allah he said, that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, From this soil we created you, and that soil you will go back to. In the graveyard go. Do you feel any different? Should a human feel any different that in this grave is a white and this is a brown and this is a red and this is a yellow and this is a black? No. They're all going back to that dirt that Allah created Adam alayhi salam from. And Shaitan, the same way he dis he hated our father Adam alayhi salam, and he had pride because he thought he was superior, being created from fire, and Adam is created from dust. Then, this is the same method he's trying to uh, to establish amongst us: that the borders of my country is better than your borders, or the color of mine is better than yours. But we have to what? How do we unite? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, hold firmly to the book of Allah, the rope of Allah. The Prophet said, the rope is the Quran, and do not be divided. We cannot think that this is a human, uh, a, a human uh, way of solution, solving things. No, Allah Azza wa Jal, He re revealed to us what to follow. That Allah said, follow what has been sent down to you from your Lord and do not follow other partners in the And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, the Prophet mentioned, the Prophet said, La fadla ala arabin, wa la arabin ala ajameen, wa la abiyad ala asud, wa la asud ala abiyad, wa la 
ولا أدل على أحمد بسم الكورس ولا أسل على أحمد إلا بالتقوى سنة حجة الوضع There is no virtue of the Arab over a non-Arab or a non-Arab over an Arab or a black over a white or a white over a black or over a red إلا بالتقوى except the تقوى الله but the real reality is when we come down to these conflicts and we start arguing over these things thinking we are in, in superior than the other this is an indication why that we do not have a taqwa because the person who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows his origin he knows humanity that we are all equal in the sight of Allah and Allah is the one فَلَا تُزَكُوا أَنْكُسَكُمْ وَعَلَمُوا بِمَنِ التَّقَى I said do not attribute piety to yourselves Allah knows better who is more pious or who has more piety and this is an indication the person doesn't have why? because that Whoever has that taqwa in their heart, it will be apparent in their actions. We're not a religion that claims I have something inwardly and act different outwardly. And to, conclude, to wrap up quick, I wish there was more time, but if you'll bear with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in Surah Al-Fatih, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ ثَمَرَاتٍ فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ ثَمَرَاتٍ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهَا Allah he says, do you not see that Allah sent down from the sky water and from that water He has made vegetation grow that are in different colors. And then Allah SWT appeals to the, to the reader of the Qur'an. وَمِنَ الْجِبَالِ جُدَدٌ بِيضٌ وَحُمْرٌ مُخْتَلِفٌ أَلْوَانُهَا وَهَرَابِي بُسُورٌ Allah he says, and also from the mountains, you know the rocks and the soils of the earth, you will find those that are white in color or red in color or those that are dark black in color. And then Allah, He says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ وَالدَّوَابِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ مُخْتَلِفٌ أَلْوَانُهُ كَذَلِكَ It's not just the rocks that have different colors, or just the plants that have different colors. No, from humanity, and the creatures that roam the earth, and the livestock and cattle. And then Allah, He says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Indeed, those who have true reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who have knowledge and scholars. So anyway, to read, this is from Burhan al-Din al-Biqa'i rahimahullah, he says in Nadhm al-Durab that in his uh, tafsir that mentions the themes of, of, of ayat and surahs that he says, وَمِنَ الْجِبَالِ and he says, meaning Allah says, from what we created جُوذَدُونَ أَيْ طَرَائِقُ وَعَلَامَاتِ وَخُطُوتُ وَمُتَقَطِعَ Path, excuse me, and signs and, and you know, roads into the earth بِيضٌ وَحُمْرٌ and, he, and then he mentions that this is an indication that أَنَّ مِنْ غَرَابَتِهَا أَنَّهَا لَا تُخْلَقُ لَا تُخْلَقُ وَلَا تُخْلَقُ مَحَلْ أَلْوَانُهَا عَلَى طُولِ الْأَزْمَانِ كَمَا هُوَ عَادِ فِي غَالِبِ مَا يُتَقَادِ الْعَدْلُ And then, excuse me, he says مُقْتَلِفُ الْأَلْوَانُهَا He says, هِيَ وَهِيَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَهِيَ وَاحِدًا He says, all these colors, they come from the earth and they are one. And then the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Excuse me, I'll try and wrap up with time. But anyway, respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this message. I believe one, first and foremost, as being a black American, a first generation being born in this country of Somali origin, that I have seen how my phenotype and my experience has been treated. But I'm not here to speak about just me or one group. Many of us can say so-and-so has treated me this way, or so-and-so has treated me that way. But the same way, the same way when you see someone being burglarized, your neighbors being burglarized, or God forbid their car is being stolen, or God forbid their house is being broken into, what do you do? You call the police or you take action. You don't let that person get mistreated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a job as believers, as Muslims, that we have to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Allah He says, وينهون عن المنكر ويحل له يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم. All of us want the mercy of Allah. Allah He said in this verse that believing men and women they are supporters, allies of one another. The first trait Allah mentioned in this verse of the believers they enjoin the good and forbid the evil. We all have to speak up against injustice. Even if it's a dominant trait in our culture, our family, our society, to bash on that group or that group, you speak out. Why? Because you have to speak for Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran, 
أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على أنفسكم أو الوالدين والأقربين. Why is all you believe? Be stand up firmly as witnesses for justice for Allah, even if that witnessing comes against your own parents or your relatives. Allah says, if they are poor or rich, Allah comes first. Don't look for a Muslim or Dunyawi. I'm going to lose my reputation. Or they're not going to like me. No, on the day of judgment, is Allah going to like me? Is Allah going to forgive me? Because Allah, He takes account to everything that we say. Nothing we utter except the angel writes it. So to show how did the Prophet ﷺ stand up for this. He's mentioned and the, the collection of Imam Abu Ya'la from Ibn Abbas that he said that um, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the time of Luhr came and this was in the farewell of Hajj he, he, or excuse me, not in the farewell of Hajj in Fath Mecca, in the conquest of Mecca The Prophet commanded Bilal to give Adhan on top of the Kaaba So this call of Tawheed it will make the polytheists and idol worshippers angry. So then what happened? Most of Quraysh were in the outskirts of neighboring mountains around Mecca. As you've seen in the Haram, around there are many mountains. Some of them had just gone into hiding. Abu Sufyan, who is Sakhar ibn Harb, wa Itab, and Khalid ibn Usayd, and Hadith ibn Hisham, they were sitting right next to the Kaaba. And they had taken Islam right after this moment in the Fatih Mecca, in the conquest of Mecca. So Ritab or Khalid ibn Usayd the narrator says, he said, لَقَدْ أَكْرَمَ اللَّهُ أُسَيْدًا أَنَّا يَكُونَ نَسْمَعُ هَذَا Imagine how when you become a Muslim, it's a journey to get rid of those bad habits, those jahili tendencies. But this man as a new Muslim, he said, Allah has honored Usayd who is his father, that he's dead before he could hear this Black man give adhan on top of the Kaaba. This would anger him hearing the adhan. وقال الحارث وحارث said, أنا والله لو أعلم أنه محق لتبعته. That this man حارث said, if I knew he was on the truth, I would have followed him. Abu Sufyan he said, لا أقول شيء. I won't say anything. لو تكلمت لا أخبر لا أخبرت عني هذا الحس هذه القصة. If I speak, this land next to me is going to be a witness against me. وَقَالَ بَعْضُ بَنِي سَعِيدِ بْنِ الْعَاصِ Some of the descendants of Sa'id ibn al-As, they said, لَقَدْ أَكْرَمَ اللَّهُ سَعِيدًا إِذْ قَبَضَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرَى هَذَا الْأَسْوَدْ عَنَ ظَهْرِ الْكَعْبِ Said, Allah has honored my father, Aas, excuse me, Sa'id, that he took his soul before he could see this black man stand on top of the Kaaba. So anyway, respected brothers and sisters, this existed in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the last example here is that it happened to the companion uh, Usama ibn Zayd. Usama ibn Zayd was the son of Umm Ayman radiallahu anha. was the only Sahabi who witnessed from the birth of the Prophet until his death. She was the servant of his mother Amir ibn Wahab. And when his mother was traveling back from Yathrib, Abu Atu, Mecca, she passed away. And she was the one who buried the mother of the Prophet so she had married Zayd ibn Haritha, who was the adopted son of the Prophet before Islam, and their son was Usama. And Usama had such a, sp a special place in the heart of the Prophet It says that when he was in the Hajj of Wudah, may, may Allah, the peace of salutations be on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was riding his camel Qaswa from Arafah to Muzdarifa for the 10th night uh, of the Hijjah and to do the rituals. So, There were some of the pilgrims around them who were new in Islam and they just took shahada making a hajj. Some of them were from Yemen. May Allah give them peace and honor and all the Muslims. They did not know the status of Usama in the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فلما رأوا النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام يستبطأ كأنه ينظر أحدا أخذوا يحدقون بأبصارهم ينتظرون رجلا. So anyway, when they saw that the person who the Prophet was waiting for was Usama, they thought he was someone عظيم and سيأتي, someone of great status and honor. وهو غلام أسود. But 
his appearance was Osama came running and he was a young black male actor. So the same Usama that they thought low in their eyes, the Prophet had him ride on the same camel that he was riding. He rode with him towards Muzdalifah. One of them said to the other, said, The Prophet delayed our Hajj for this person because he's black in appearance. And unfortunately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very displeased, not unfortunately, Allah was displeased with this action and as mentioned other reports, the same people who ridiculed Osama in this, they ended up apostating from the religion and they did not die as Muslims. So this is just one example respect to brothers and sisters. But we all know in, in, in America we are a minority, 83%. If we start fighting with each other and dividing each other, how on earth are we one going to live a good life in this, in this earth, in this country and spread the religion of Islam? And to what kind of example are we going to be for the non-Muslim? Anything I say good is for, from Allah, Allah alone. Anything I say evil is for me and Shaitan. And Allah is a messenger of you from me. Inna Allahu malaikatu yusallun ala nabi. Ayyuradin amu sallu alayhi wa sallam wa tislima. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hassan wa ala afirati hassan wa kina adhabu naq. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an tansuru islam wa tu'izzal muslimin. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعذل الشيخ والمشركين وزمن عداك عداء الدين اللهم صل المسلمين في كل مكان في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها يا رب العالمين اللهم صلهم في غزة وفي فلسطين وفي اليمن وفي تركستان وشيمان وفي بورما وفي كشمير وفي أفغانستان وباكستان اللهم صلهم في في سوريا اللهم صل المسلمين في الأردن اللهم صل المسلمين في لبنان اللهم صل المسلمين في مصر اللهم صل المسلمين في السودان يا رب العالمين اللهم صل المسلمين في ليبيا اللهم اجعلنا في بلدنا هذا آمنين مطمئنين اللهم اجعلنا في بلدنا هذا رخاء وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا دين إلا قضيته ولا عسر إلا يسرته ولا مبتن إلا عافيته ولا مريض إلا شافيته ولا أحد من ميتين من أهلين إلا رحمته ولا ضعيف إلا قويته ولا فقير إلا أغنيته ولا جاهلا إلا علمته ولا شاردا إلا رددته ولا ظالما إلا وفقته للتوبة والإنصاف ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا كذب ومرنا فيها الصلاة إلا قضيتها ويصنتها يا رحم الرحيمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما نصفون والسلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وقوموا إلى صلاة